We want to find a way to allow users to input their own information into our Java program. It would be kind of boring if the program told us what it wanted to do all the time because, well, that's what wives and girlfriends are for. So we want to find a way to allow user input to a program. Now, Java programming is not an all-inclusive resort in Mexico. Nothing is included. So if you want to have something like user input, you need to tell the program that you want it included. Now, we're going to do this on the first line. Before we actually get into creating our class and creating our main method, you want to write what I'm going to write right now, which is going to be import. You can put a space and you're going to write java.util for utility and you put another dot and you're going to write scanner and a capital S on the scanner and you're going to end that line off with a semicolon. Now the scanner is going to allow you to scan your keyboard if you will and it's going to see what the user is going to be inputting when you ask them to input some information and we're going to be taking that information we're going to be storing it inside of a variable and we're going to see exactly how uh, we can do that. We're going to be printing that variable out later on to see if we can actually store the information that the user submits. So you can start off with that line right there and now we can get into creating our class. So we can go ahead and write public class and we write the name of our class which we know over here is lemming.java so we're going to write lemming with the capital L and that's going to be our class. We can open up some curly braces here to make the body of our class and now we need to have the main method which is going to be the script of our program, the movie script like I mentioned. So we can write public static void main and in brackets string put the square which is your open and close braces and then write arcs right there. Sorry about that. There you go. So that's our main method right there. Like I mentioned later on, we will find out what all these words mean. But for now, you need to just know what order they come in. So inside of this main method, we want to go ahead and create a scanning variable. We're going to write scanner. And you can go ahead and write the name of any variable you want. So I can just go ahead and write x, right? So the variable x is going to be the one that's going to be scanning. And it's going to be the one that's going to be storing the information that I'm going to be inputting with my keyboard or what the user is going to be inputting. So you go ahead and put make that assign it to something. You're going to write equal. And you're going to go ahead and write new scanner. And in brackets, you're going to write system dot in. So what does all this mean right here? This means we want to create a new scanner and the scanner is going to be the variable that's going to be storing the information that you're going to be inputting with your keyboard. And like we had system dot out when we want to output something to our monitor, if we want to go in the other direction, which is inputting something to our system, we'll write system dot in. So this is going to be the line that we use to create a variable that's going to be allowing user input. Scanner, the name of the variable, assignment operator, which is the equal sign, new scanner, embraces, system dot in close brace and the line off with a semicolon. So this means that it's going to ask me to input something so I can type something in and it's going to go ahead and it's going to just allow me to uh, store that in X. So now we can go ahead on the next line and we want to print this out on the screen, right? Because if I were to go ahead and build and run this, it's just going to go ahead and accept whatever I type in. So it's going to say, ask me to type something in, I'll type it in, but it's not going to show it on screen to confirm that it actually worked because I never have a system output request. I never said system out. I don't want it to actually print the variable on screen to confirm to me that it actually stored the variable, which is what we're going to do right now, just to make sure that what we did works. So now we're going to make an output and we know this already system dot out dot print line. And now what we're going to do is in bracket we're going to write the name of the variable. So in this case, x, you're going to put a dot separate and then you're going to write next line and you're going to put open close brace and make sure you leave a little bit, not don't leave space there, but make sure you know that you also have to put the other bracket for your, um, you know, for the other thing, right? So we see right here, right? We have x dot next line. Then you have your open and close bracket and you also have to remember these brackets over here, right? The initial brackets that you have with your system output request. That's what I wanted to say. So we have all that there and we end that off with a semicolon. And this over here, that next line over here, this means it's going to wait for you to ensure that something is typed in, right? It makes sure your user has to type something in to your system input uh, in order to move on. And this is going to allow you to print out the variable X. So go ahead and run your program by pressing this button up here. And now we can go ahead to the console down here and go ahead and input some things. So I can input whatever I want. We see that we don't actually have anything going on over here. But if I were to go ahead and type a number, let's go type the number 50. And we see that's in green, right? Because that's my input. So if you're using Eclipse and it shows up in green, that's your input. If you go ahead and press enter, we'll see we're going to get the exact same value back. Now what went on here, right? Well, we know the first thing that my uh, main method asked us to do, right? When we look top to bottom in the main method, the first thing it asked us to do was to input something, right? We have a system in. System System dot in means we want to input something and you want to put that into your new scanning variable, your new scanner. And that scanner right here was going to be X, right? So the scanner variable X is going to be storing whatever we input. So we input 50 and then we store that inside of X. Now, like in the last video on variables, we know that whenever we call upon this variable later on, we're not going to go and get X. We're going to get whatever X is storing inside of it. In this case, X is storing inside of it what we entered 
50. Now down here, I have a system output. We go ahead and we write that we want X to be outputted. So I want to output the variable X. In this case, the variable X is representing what we entered, which is 50. And that means it's going to be sending that back to our screen just to confirm that our input actually worked. And the next line, like I mentioned, will just ensure that we actually inputted something for X. Just to make sure we don't uh, go crazy or screw something up. So that's how we work with user inputs in Java. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the series.